Hello creatives, welcome back to my channel. I'm Angela, a graphic designer and an illustrator, and today we're going to be brand building. So I'm going to be designing a brand called Zephyr, and this brand is going to have some social media posts and a story post as well as colors, and we're going to modify some type. So let's dive in to Illustrator on the iPad. I have my artboards set up right here. I have quite a few different ones. The way to get different artboards is through the setup in the beginning when you go to create new. You have your settings to the right. Select how many artboards you want to create and what size you want them to be, what orientation you want them to be in. You can also name it there and that is how you get the multiple artboards right here. We're going to start over here with this first artboard. Most of my artboards are 1080 pixels by 1920 pixels in the vertical orientation because stories are all vertical. All these square artboards that I have down here are 1080 by 1080 pixels respectively. And then these tiny little artboards here they are 230 pixels by 700 pixels put my colors into. Let's go up here to Zephyr, a clean, classic type of interiors brand. They need something that's going to relate to those keywords. These two fonts here, this one I have as a personal favorite of mine. This one is called Angie Sans Standard. Now this one I would love to use However, I'm not sure it's exactly what is needed for this brand. I have this selection here, which is Minion Variable Concept, and I chose a variable concept for a very specific reason, because we can modify different individual characters. So we're going to try that today. Zoom in for all of you. Now I want to start with what would be the easiest letter, which would be H. Double tap in. So I have the H selected. Let's open up our properties panel. And every variable concept font has different choices for you. Under regular, you have all these selections. I'm going to choose display medium italic and see what that looks like. Ooh, that looks very good. Let's do Y next. Just because we're switching up some of them doesn't mean that all of them are going to be the same or changed. The display medium italic here regular italic. I'm marrying the weight thickness of the arms of the H to the Y. I tap into this icon here. It gives you a lot more control over the customization of this. So you have weight and optical size. I'm going to leave optical size alone and increase the weight ever so slightly to about 510. That looks much better. This is what you can do with variable font. The Z is looking really nice with this. However, we do have to mess with the other letters. And I'll get back to the Z in a moment. For R, let's see. What is regular display? Let's do a regular italic for R and display italic. The display italic by itself is looking much better. Let's do E. I feel like the letter P is going to be very difficult. I'm going to use the display italic and for the P, display. I like display, however we have it kind of running on an italicized type of feel here. And the reason why I chose italicized is because Zephyr is very breezy, it's very airy, it's very light, and with italics it can tend to be more light. It has more movement to it rather than just a straight standard font. Display italic, not the best. Display medium italic is too much. Display some of both too big. Okay, so display italic and then let's go back into our variable font options. Increase the weight ever so slightly at a time. 450 looks like it's gonna be the like perfect middle ground here. There's a little bit of spacing issues between the P and the H, so let's address that right now. Let's move that around. That's looking a lot better. For the Z, highlight the Z, see what display looks like. Oh, display looks so good on this one. Let's see about regular italic. It's a little heavy. Display italic. 
Regular display italics a little bit too small. Regular italics a bit too big. It takes a lot of the ligatures off. Let's go into our variable font selections and then let's increase the weight of this ever so slightly. Do a nice whole number here. 440. I think the thing that isn't working is this ligature right here. So I'm going to, because this has a lot of curves and it also has some harsh lines. So I think instead of having the harsh line appear, I'm just going to take that off by outlining the text now that we have it. Let's duplicate this. I'm gonna take this other font and just move it out of the way because we're not going to use it. Let's take this, go to our type option over here on the right toolbar, click outline text. Plus there's a little bit of harshness happening here. So let's choose our point selection tool, select this, pull this down. It looks a little bit more like it's in line. That way it doesn't have such a harsh line to it. That's so much better. In the world of typography, we have terms like baseline, ligature, arms, kerning, tracking, like all these terms. Basically what ligatures are, are these things that kind of like hang off of the end of a curve or a straight line. So anything that looks like this, anything that looks like these are all considered ligatures. Select my point selection tool here, select a point, press the X on the quick selection menu, and it just gets rid of them without breaking my path. I just want to get rid of those points because they're unnecessary in this case. And mess with the points here. There we go. That looks so much nicer. This is going to be our secondary font. So there is Zephyr right here. Let's go into brand colors. Brand colors come from the brand themselves, the look, the feel, the type of tone they want to set for their brand. I have already selected these colors from images we're going to use. More neutral type colors is what I'm feeling for this. Do you have under my color selection, I have all the colors already swatched, but if you're working with a brand for the first time and they have images already had taken and they want to use that for their brand messaging and for their like packaging, their concept and such like that, then pull the colors from there. Or if they already have their brand colors chosen, use those. Let's go on to a new layer. Make sure you name your layers. First color is going to be this one. Take your square shape tool, which is right here, and drop it in. It's a very, very muted neutral color. I love this one. Almost like a sand, like a white sand color. Duplicate this, pull it over to the next artboard. Go into my color selector and choose the next darker color. And I'm just gonna go in order. As you can see, this is very, very, very neutral. There are our brand colors and there is our font already selected and set up. I have already chosen photos for this. Here's the first one. These photos do not match with the artboard, so we're gonna create a clipping mask. Square shape tool, make it the same size as the artboard. You can go into the properties panel. For the size, I know that it's 1080 by 1920. I was really close here. And then I just nudge it over into place, select that shape, select the image, go over to your object selection over here on the right, make clipping mask. You can then take Zephyr font from over here, duplicate it, bring it down over to this artboard over here. The color for this font doesn't really work on this background. Let's change our color. That one I like the color of, so let's put a shadow on it. Make a duplication, and the duplication is just going to be a shade darker. Zephyr, very airy, very breezy. It still blends in too much. Let's try this lighter one. That looks a lot better. We can add some brand messaging in here in a little bit. Open up our next image, create the clipping mask once again. Make sure the size is correct. I'm a little bit short on the width of this. There we go. Nudge that into place, clipping mask, there we go. I kind of want to create something that speaks more to the brand messaging, but let's pop up all the rest of these images and let's get them all set into place. When it comes to branding and building brand imagery and concepts, you want to make sure that every bit of it, every piece screams what the brand is about. There's a lot of like natural 
wood tones in here as far as these exposed beams in this image and a lot of wood tones with this like wicker vase here and a wicker stool over here. Yeah, there's a little bit of gold here and there for like some industrial, but it's very minimal. Everything is more earthy, but not in a heavy way. Between the colors, the tones, the imagery, you want that. But then there's also these textures. In this image, you can almost feel like, oh, there might be something moving this texture. That is kind of like what you're looking for when it comes to building brands. Every element of the concept from the font that you choose, the imagery that you choose, and the colors that are chosen to exemplify what the brand is about. Let's make sure we're on the correct layer. I'm gonna set this automatically to display italic just to see how it goes. I'm gonna write the word interiors. With everything that you give to the client, it has to completely represent the brand. With this word interiors, put it all the way down here at the bottom. This is a little bit too big. Bring it down, that works. This is gonna be seen like on a phone screen, so you wanna make sure that they are related, however, it's not overpowering. Put it into the brand colors. It kind of blends in a bit too much. I think I like that warm one. I'm wondering if this one is a little bit too muted for here. Ah, oh, that's so much better. Okay, so you're just changing the color ever so slightly to a different one really works. So nice. Okay, so this next one, take this Zephyr, duplicate it, and bring it over to this one. However, this one is obviously way too light. Let's change the color to, there's a lot more wood natural tones in this one that I think this one will work well. I'm gonna bring this down to the bottom, and we're also gonna decrease the size. Tap on the touch selector, hold and slide to any direction. Decrease the size from the center instead of from one corner. Normally, it would decrease the size from like the bottom left hand corner but if you tap hold and slide the touch selector it'll downsize it from the center or increase the size if that's what you're doing i want to leave a good amount of space at the bottom that way it doesn't get cut off just like we did with the other one make a duplication of this nudge it up ever so slightly and we're going to make it into a lighter color this is where your properties panel is going to save you i'm not very delicate when it comes to moving this that's what this x and y pixels is for is moving things up and down like such. Oh, I'm moving in the wrong direction. I always go in the wrong direction first. Do you guys do that? I always go in the wrong direction first. And then let's add some text in here. Very font display. Look at that. Illustrator is smart enough to where it's like, oh, you used this font before? Guess what? We're going to use it again. Here you go. Double tap in, type in. And we want to move this in line with Zephyr. Turn our rulers on under this precision third icon down here. And let's turn rulers on. I don't want my rulers to be a bright, bright blue. Let's make them more in line with what we're doing here. Did you guys know that you can change the colors of your guides on the iPad? You can. Bring a guide here. This font is a little bit too big at 70 because that was for the font down, uh, that was for the font on the other one. So let's make it a little bit smaller. Let's go to 50. 55. That looks so much better. That sounds better as well. Since it seems to blend in so well, I would definitely be interested in creating a shape behind this. Let's change the stacking order of that. Let's take down the opacity of it as well. And opacity is the first icon in the quick selection menu. And this gives us a lot more freedom with the text here. Choose a lighter, warm version of it. It seems to be fighting too much with that. So let's move this over. This opacity is a bit too opaque. There is our second one. It balances out the photo. Let's go into this texture piece. Bring the brand name down here. Kind of want to do more of the darker tones like this one. I think that would be really nice on there. And we have like what the brand is all about kind of flowing around here. And even this image, we can take the opacity down to where it just feels a bit more lighter. Let's duplicate this over. There's decorating. Or instead of decorating, how about we just do decor. Consulting. 
And let your guides help you to keep you within the spacing so that way you don't run off and have like all these things being cut off. Dear decor. Okay, my overhead camera cut off somewhere in there, but this is what we ended up with this one. We have a secondary color in there and then what Zephyr provides. Come over here to this artboard here and showcase the type of feeling that Zephyr gives. Take this one here, duplicate it, bring it over here, make sure we're on the correct layer, drag and drop it, bring this down here into the bottom corner. We don't need it that big. We're going to make it a bit smaller for the font size. Make it about that small. Yep, let's turn our guides back on. We're gonna need to see where that bottom line is. Moving past it and choose our lighter color. Boy, that stands out so beautifully. Okay, and then up here, we're going to do some customer feedback and what they provide as far as their feeling, their aesthetic and such like that. Providers of the highest quality in, in mind. Something short and sweet. It could be a bit smaller. And let's of course put it into the correct brand colors. Pull a guide here based on the other one that's over there. There we go. Make sure that we put this in the correct spacing. Duplicate this one. Let's do our little handy dandy trick. I would prefer to have a bit of a shadow behind this for legibility. We can even take down the opacity slightly of this image because of the brand colors. We can even take this down and kind of like place it here. And then this is like a perfect opportunity where you can provide like some fun like shapes and such like that. We have lots of different shapes in this imagery. Take that and duplicate it across. Take this kind of color here, this more neutral middle color, and create kind of like a um, terrazzo type of shape because they use that in interiors recently. Change the stacking order, that's better. And we can even take down the opacity of it too, just so it's not fighting so much with the photograph. There, just to add to the light, easy breeziness of the branding here. Let's turn our guides off. And that is looking so good right now. Since we did that fun little shape here on this one, Let's duplicate it and put it up on this layer up here. It does make it very Instagrammable. Decrease the size of it. It's kind of like a speech bubble now. That looks so nice. For our social posts, we have the brand, what it aims to do, what the brand does. Let's take this home with one final piece here. Duplicate this over, bring it over here, and let's decrease the size of it. There we go. Bring our guides back so we can see. I kind of don't want it that dark color. Let's make it, there we go. We'll make it that color. Just to drive the brand messaging home even more, let's do something very simple. Say your choice for home decor. There we go. Bring it up here in the center. Change it from left justification to central. Bring that piece that we created over there over into this space to keep it consistent. And we can even take this and duplicate it and have it running off the image, which I always love to do. It's quite fun to do that. Coming off over there and we can have it coming off over here just to give it kind of like that balance. And then over here in this bottom corner, there we go. And of course, bring that down in size, the smallest size here. So we have difference in uh, sizes of fonts and weight. There we go. And then for this last one, since we added these shapes, we can include them in the clipping mask. So let's choose our clipped group, expand that out, pull these into the clipped group, just like so, and they won't harm anything. Let's turn those guides off. We don't need those anymore. They did their job. Here is our brand of Zephyr. We kept within the colors of the brand throughout the entire piece. We also made sure that the colors were well distributed throughout. We made some unique shapes throughout this so that way it doesn't take away from the imagery or the messaging by utilizing them in different areas for the social posts. And we made sure that the imagery stayed within not only the colors but also the look and feel of the brand and we even described a little bit of what the brand does they provide decor they do staging they also provide environmentally friendly pieces high quality pieces really high quality very sophisticated so this is 
Zephyr. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you all learned a little bit more about brand building and some of the rules that you should stay within, the messaging, the colors, and making sure that your font choices fit in with the overall feeling and mood of the brand. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment down below if you want me to do more of these, and I definitely will if you want to see them. I will see you all in the next one. See you soon, creatives. I don't want that, thank you. That is the one annoying thing about the iPad is the on-screen keyboard just pops up and just moves everything out of your way.